Apakabar! Mike here. So today I'm going to teach you how to do a big air takeoff like a pro. This technique is called the preload pop. You've probably seen your favorite big air riders doing this and wondered why the f is everybody hopping around like f***ing rabbits? And the short answer is gravity. It's quite a complex takeoff technique. So I recommend only trying it if you've mastered the basic takeoff. But even if you aren't ready for it, you will still learn loads from this video. So in your journey of learning how to jump higher and higher, you'll notice that when you learn to harness more power, you're able to jump higher. But there comes a point when you kind of want to send your kite faster and generate more power, but you don't know how to harness that power. So this is where the preload pop comes in handy. It's a technique that will allow you to hold your edge better and as a result you're able to send your kite faster, generate more power and get consistently bigger jumps. By the way, if you want to get one of these t-shirts, be sure to stick around until the end of the video. In this video you will learn basic jumping theory, how the preload pop works, how to preload pop in flats and how to preload pop in waves. And the time codes are down in the description below so you can skip to the section that you want to watch. But otherwise, I encourage you to watch the whole video. I've made sure to share a lot of knowledge that should be of value to you guys. So before we go any further, you need to understand the basics of how a kite works. So here's the leading edge and here's the trailing edge. So the more air that flows over this kite, the more lift it will experience. So when you're riding and your kite is over here, there's air flowing over it here and it's lifting, pulling you to the side. And when you're jumping, you're trying to get that kite above you with a lot of air flowing over it and that lift is going to be up here, taking you up. Cool. So if you look at the formula for lift of a kite, you'll see that airflow is squared. In other words, Keeping all else constant, if you double airflow, the amount of air flowing over the canopy, you quadruple the lift. And if you triple your airflow, you 9x the lift. So it's really important to move that kite fast. So when we're riding, we're really trying to maximize that airflow, not only during the riding phase by riding fast and creating a lot of induced wind, which we'll get into in another video, but also during the takeoff phase, you want to maintain that airflow right up to the point of takeoff. Now we maintain that airflow by sending the kite up super fast. Now, if you look at jumping as a system of parts, we can use this catapult as a metaphor. Over here, this wooden part is the kite and down here is you the rider with your board and good edging technique so you generate a lot of airflow over the kite the kite's gonna pull but now you have good edging technique and you have this resistance on the water and as you see when you introduce good kite control and good edging technique you already stretch out this elastic which symbolizes the energy in the system so when you ride and you have a really good approach you're maximizing the energy in the system. But now during the takeoff phase, your job is to get this kite above you, to send the kite up and maintain the power that you had generated in the system right up to the point of takeoff. And then you're gonna get shot straight up. So now keep in mind, there are so many things that can go wrong with your takeoff. You can be riding and everything's going well on approach and you can lose your edge coming closer to the kite, losing power in the system. You can be riding, send your kite up, send it past 12, take too long to take off and lose that power in the system. You can be riding with good edging, send the kite up, 
generate too much power that you're not capable of handling and instead of getting the kite up and getting shot up you don't manage to get the kite up and then you get shot off to the side somewhere or get shot downwind. So guys, I don't want this analogy to confuse any of you. And one thing that might be confusing is thinking of these as the lines and thinking that the lines in your kite stretch and this stretch is what's pulling you off the water. It doesn't work that way. You're not getting pulled off the water by some elastic force. You're getting pulled off the water by an aerodynamic wing that has air flying over it and has an ideal angle of attack and thus is lifting and pulling you through taut lines. So to recap, this is the kite, this is you, the rider, and this is the energy in the system. If we look at a top, you'll see that because you are anchored and you have more resistance, you're able to generate more energy in the system and go really high. So this is the same way that the preload pop works. By using gravity and increasing our resistance on the water, we're able to generate more energy in the system and jump higher. So when we do this little jump, we land and submerge the board deeper into the water and as a result we have a greater surface area of water against which to push and we have a greater resistant force on the water. Because we have more resistance on the water we can afford to send the kite faster and as you know the faster the kite is moving the more air that is flowing over the kite the more lift it will generate. All right. For starters, you need good edging. Edging is actually quite a complex topic, so I will cover that in another video. For now, let's focus on the preload pop itself. We're breaking it down into four parts. Send, pop, land and carve, pop and sheet in. Ride with the kite low at about 30 or 35 degrees. Send the kite. You will want to let the bar out a little bit to accommodate the increase in pull from the kite. Also, notice how my hands are at the center of the bar. Your hands should almost always be in the middle of the bar. This ensures that you have a high steering to feedback ratio and you're making more precise steering. Whilst the kite is traveling up, do a small hop. On your approach and when you do your little hop, you need to make sure that you don't go downwind. Try and stay in the same line on which you were approaching. With a bigger takeoff in general, you never want to go downwind. As you can see, if you have energy in the system and you go downwind, you lose that energy. Going downwind during your approach or takeoff is a mistake I see very often and it's understandable. When you reduce the power in the system, it becomes easier to control that power. But like I said, you won't be able to jump as high. So when you're landing from the preload pop, the angle at which your board lands is really important. If your board lands too flat, it won't penetrate the water and you won't get the benefit of the preload pop. So you really wanna make sure that you've got those toes pulled back and that body positioned accordingly so that board comes down like this. And then you're able to carve and pop. Your carve should be graceful. I want you to bring your center of gravity low and drive your force through the board. When you're carving, Think of it as a battle between you and the kite. Because you have more resistance in your edge, you are now able to send your kite more aggressively, generating more power. It's important that you are carving against the pull of the kite. 
These two movements of you carving upwind and the kite traveling up need to be in sync. From the moment you have landed and set your edge deeper into the water, you want to send the kite up super fast. Whilst your kite is still moving towards 12 and it is half a tick away, pop and sheet in at the same time. Pop by pushing your back foot hard into the water and extend your back leg completely to get the maximum power out of your pop. Try and get your pop and sheet in in sync so that you sheet in at the same time as you take off. In order to ensure that all this force you generated takes you straight up, you want your kite to be at 12 o'clock at the point when you start flying. If your kite is over to the side, it's going to pull you over to the side rather than pulling you straight up and that's going to result in a sub-optimal jump. You'll notice with this jump that the kite was behind me at the point when I started flying and this results in a sub-optimal takeoff. Firstly, my kite is too high. One very common mistake is taking off too late. In other words, the ideal time to take off was when the kite was approaching 12 o'clock. And instead, I took off after this point. So the system was already running out of power. Thanks to Raphael for submitting this clip of him approaching maybe a little bit too fast, not managing to get that board back into the water. <laughs> I recommend you learn on flat water first because every approach and takeoff can be the same. When doing it in waves, you want to find the trough of the wave, hop and land into the trough. This will allow you to get that edge nice and deep. So you probably know how to hop carve, pop, and send your kite. So you should just be able to do it, right? But it's not that simple. You need to get the timing right. The greatest return on investment with jumping comes from timing. When you can combine all these elements together, you get an exponential return on investment, and that's when you really jump high. So what I recommend you do is just practice the preload pop. Don't worry about jumping high. Don't worry about doing big jumps and landing at the start. Just focus on getting that takeoff right and getting that timing and getting that yank off the water. Break it down to the small parts and practice just this small part. Don't practice your approach, takeoff, flying and landing. Just practice the approach and your takeoff. Approach, takeoff. And keep practicing until you get the yank. And once you feel like you've got that powerful pull on takeoff and everything's coming together, then start doing those big jumps. You'll get way more practice in, in your session. And maybe it's not so fun for now, but in the long run, you're gonna progress way faster and it's so much better. So to recap, send the kite, do your little hop, land submerging the board deeper into the water, carve and simultaneously send that kite up super fast. If you want to get the PDF guide on how to preload pop so you can take it to the beach, just head over to my website and you'll find it over there. And by the way, some of you guys might be wondering how you can get one of these t-shirts. So you can get one by adding a destination to the Big Air Destination Guide and you'll find the link down below. All you gotta do is click over there and share your knowledge with the kite community. So what this destination guide is gonna enable you guys to do is like, you'll be able to say, hey, I wanna go kiting Somewhere this year in Jan, Feb and March, I like to jump to the left and I'm looking for super strong wind and I want it to be family friendly because I want to take my wife and kids. So you just beep, 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 select those filters and the guide will show you all your possible options. How fucking cool is that? I'm super excited. So guys, please add that destination. So guys, this video whew, took so much work and if you guys appreciate the work that I'm putting into these videos, all I ask is that you subscribe 
so that you can see future videos. Also, please ring that bell so that you can get alerts when I make posts and things like that. If you ring the bell and it gives you an error message, all you've got to do is unsubscribe, subscribe again, make sure you do that part, and ring the bell again, and then it should work. So I hope all of you guys are getting lots of kiting in, staying healthy, eating well, exercising lots, and shagging lots. Everybody have a groovy time, and as always, if you've got any questions, just ask me in the comments below. I will be sure to respond to you. Oh yeah, and before I forget, the writer of the episode goes to Jamie Overbeer. He's a Dutch dude, and he is fucking killing it.